thank you everyone uh, for joining today's session uh, my name is jigar shah and i'm going to be the host for this session today uh, this session is going to be an interesting one um, and uh, we have a very uh, knowledgeable and experienced uh, speaker who's going to be uh, you know the captain of our ship today uh, so and i'm very honored and uh, very excited to introduce uh, sachin choudhury so sachin um, of course he doesn't need any introduction but i'm still give you know give it my best shot to introduce himself sachin is a um is a program architect director at salesforce and he's a certified technical architect himself and uh, he is going to help uh, us and a lot of people around answer that golden question saying that how do how does one become um, and get ready for uh, the certified technical architect exam so without taking much time um, sachin it's it's over to you and uh, we're all excited and all ears to hear from you okay thank you jigar for a good introduction and warm welcome so hello ohana good morning good afternoon and good evening based on wherever you are right or i would say always like cheers because there is always like 5 pm somewhere in the world right so without further ado My name is Sachin Chaudhary, working as program architect. Uh, been with Salesforce ecosystem for twelve plus years, and uh, with overall industry experience of like twenty plus years. Uh, whatever you see in my photo and like this thing, okay, this is all like CT. Also, is one of the contributor to my hairstyle. Okay. So first of all, I would like to thank you for entire virtual dreaming team. So you guys are doing phenomenal job. Uh, and providing this platform for experienced architects to help the like budding architects and make sure that as a left brain is overall world like we are helping each other and making like better architectures and keep on improving every day right so thank you for providing that platform right also thank you to our sponsors uh, then this is like very important thing is like the first slide is like why ct impossible right so during my journey i felt it like a lot of times is like city impossible right it a lot of frustration during the preparation i don't want to scare anyone but uh, that is a reality right so what it needs is like when you look at the cta study like it just needs a little bit change of perception what is it is when you change it when you look at it as like a different perception it cta is possible it's simple thing that will take out like all the burdens all the frustration what you have it during the journey but it will make you like ct is possible right now when you start with the like ct there are three things okay there are three key pillars for the success the plan prepare and execute plan will tell you about like when you are going to give uh, ready for the exam how you want to be ready for the exam and when uh, how you're going to be ready for the exam right so those are the three key things that will help you to address through the plan then comes the like preparation stage so when you prepare it during preparation it will help you identify like what are your strength what are your weaknesses what are your uh, important points what you would like to uh, capture as part of like ct right and then execute is where your golden opportunity to embrace what the skills that you acquired through plan and prepare right and also like it's a showcase it's opportunity to showcase is like what you learn and how best you can apply that to your customer engagement or to your own organization right so let's look at the like plan right okay and one thing like before we go for the right i would like to welcome like more and more questions so because i want to keep it like interactive next 20 25 minutes i would like to go through the slides explain the process that i have been through and if that helps to like others to adopt it feel free and then next 15 minutes i would like to take like any of the questions okay so when you start with the plan the first and most important is find your motivation so what motivates you to be a cta right because every person is different everyone has a different objectives in their life what is it that's motivating because cta is not something that hey, you just like take a shopping bag go to the store and then bring something 
right it's not it takes tremendous amount of like efforts and consistent efforts it's not only efforts but it's consistent efforts and commitment required so what is your motivation for me my motivation was my daughter because whenever like i has to ask her for do some study she was looking at me really and i was thinking i was like okay i need to set an example for her and cta was the best possible chance i could have it because she saw me during my cta is like 3 months 4 months is like okay i'm getting up every day morning i'm giving like committed time during those time i'm just spending all the time on my like cta during that time right at the same time it is also important that we do not compromise our family time right so that leads to our like second point is alignment with your family it is very important to have the like your family aligned with your objective and the commitment you are doing to yourself for city right my wife was kind enough she gave me 4 months and we had an agreement saying that if i get my city in the first attempt then it's good otherwise i will not go for my city right so that was my second uh motivation and also you realize now is okay why i could solve the scenario in 120 minutes because my wife has given me only like 4 months to prepare for city so she didn't give me like any additional time <laughs> okay so then like after i had like alignment with the family then i give commitment to myself saying that okay like this is the board i want to apply for so i started preparing it right and then I I started identifying like what are the knowledge gaps I have right what areas of my CTA I'm strong at like what are the areas I'm not good at it right because as all of us like work in different uh, uh, engagements different customers has different requirements or if you are working for like your own organization implementing Salesforce you would be having certain areas pretty good but not so good with like other areas right so so how do you identify and as like human right every other person right on this call or like outside this call it's normal tendency that like if you don't use something obviously you tend to like forget something right over the period of time so that's where like you need know, to identify the knowledge gaps identify what are your strengths and weaknesses because cta is not only about like i'm pretty good at technical so i will just go and like uh, it's slam dunk no it's not you need to have the presentation skills you need to have the like courage to stand in front of like people who are like more experienced cta and could evaluate you right and could poke hole in your solution right you might be thinking oh my goodness i'm doing like 20 years this and like i'm pretty good but that may not be the case right because during the constant environments you might not perform equally well as you would otherwise right so that's where it's important to identify what is your what are your strength what are your weaknesses and then include that in the plan is like how you're going to convert your weaknesses into like opportunities and do the swot analysis right that's typical methodology that we have been like learning when we are like i would say elementary school of like career right uh, then when you prepare the plan couple of things is like identify what topic you want to target every day right because there are so many like salesforce ecosystem and the platform is so vast that you cannot touch on each and every topic every day so you need to identify like what topic you want to cover on what day right do the planning on week basis month and then day basis and then distribute your topic so i have like sample plan that i prepared for myself so i'll share that uh, in the next slides then study your mock scenarios right it is important that like if you are going to plan for cta it's important for you to prepare those mocks because cta if you decide to just go for the cta and without any mock practice you are not going to do well right at least i i knew that i couldn't do well right so study your mocks try to form the like study groups or try to join the like peers uh, who are uh, in the same boat as you and then try to use those right uh, as a opportunity to study your mock and judge your sessions then find your best time of the day right because it depends on like if you are early bird or if you are night owl it depends on like what time of the day is like best your body is at good stage your mind is at good stage right because if you start like if you have like hectic days and then you start at 6:00 in the evening oh my goodness i'm already 
ready to go to bed. So I cannot really perform well on my mock scenarios or my CT, right? So keto to identify, again, for me, like I was like early bird. I was, initially I was not, but then I changed myself to early bird because what I found is if I start like get up early morning, my body and my brain had good rest and I can concentrate all of my energy into my study, right? So even if I get like morning, two hours, three hours, whatever time I get it, right? Four to five, four to seven or five to seven kind of thing. I could concentrate and I was like pretty good on producing the outcome that I was expecting, right? So within those morning, two hours or three hours, I could produce the like output of like four hours or five hours in the day, right? So that is where like it helped me because by the time there are two main reasons, like one, as I said, it's like my body and mind is fresh. And the second thing is kids are still in bed, right? So you don't compromise on like family time because by the time they wake up, obviously they're not, they're going to toss you a city study plan. They'll say, hey, dad, you're always like sitting in front of your laptop <laughs> and that's not good, right? So those are the like, key reasons is like why I choose to be like early bird in my city preparation, right? So let's take a look at the sample plan. And this is what actually I used it, right? If you look at it, it's simple, like all the topics, what I wanted to cover or what is required for the CT preparation. And then I put my mocks, right? That is around like three to four months, around like you talk about like 12 to 16 weeks of like time frame, right? And then every topic has subtopics that what is it that I'm going to cover under integration? What is it that I'm going to cover under identity and access management? So those are the subtopics and that list is like huge. It's kind of like never ending because at Salesforce, we innovate like every uh, four months and then like there are hundreds of new things are coming up, right? So that's the reason like you need to think about it, like how, what the plan is going to work for you. Okay? Now, next stage comes for the like, preparation. Okay? So when you prepare, there are three things. Uh, okay. Sorry, my keyboard is going a little faster than screen. So when you prepare, right, the first thing is about identifying knowledge gaps, right? I briefly touch upon it. The first thing, how I can identify what is a knowledge gap because, hey, I'm working like 20 years in the industry and I have been like done like more than two dozen Salesforce implementations and so on, right? So the first thing first is like open your CTS study guide and try to understand what is it that's been asked. Try to put yourself into the shoes of judges and see if you need to evaluate a someone with the depth and breadth of the platform, what kind of questions you're going to ask on each of the topic. If you can do that effectively, then you know that CTA, what is expected. Okay? So that was my first step is like go through CTA study guide and understand each and every topic and subtopic and try to put down on my own words to see like, what is it that is expected from the candidate, right? Second thing is trailhead is your best friend, right? What syllabus is required? Whatever it's required on CTA, because the syllabus generally what we say, like what I understood from my coaches is everything that is generally available, right? That is the part of syllabus. Now, where do I get all of these things? I get all of these things in uh, my trailhead, right? So CTA certification trail mix under that it has all the nine or ten domain uh, trail heads. and then go through each and every model but what is more important is like you look through the individual links under those bottom of those every sections of the module because those module is just give you the brief information or get into introduction to that topic but intricacies and the uh, depth of that topic is lies in those the links that's available there, right? Next thing is like when you do like solve as much mock scenarios as you can, right? Uh, on CTA uh, certification guide or like uh, Trailblazer group, there are certain mock scenarios that were being used as like uh, reference from the like earlier actual CTA scenario, CTA guides. So use those, right? And First thing is like solve one of the scenario and then open DR and try to implement one. It will do like two things for you. One, when you solve the scenario in like say 90 minutes or like 120 minutes, whatever time is given, right? 
you must have saw it in certain areas and then you just passed on thinking about okay this is good enough to answer the question or the requirement right but when you try to implement that it may not work as it is right so that will tell you about like when the constraints are put on you with the timing and kind of thing how you behave and how you solve it versus if you don't have any constraint no constraint take your own time and implement it and see what is the best possible solution you can come up with right so always remember there will be always time constraint on the cta but you need to always provide the best possible solution what you can do it, right then as i said is you need to join the like fail identify some of the fellow architects or join the study groups where you can how join study group one of the benefit with that is like you get the like minded folks and you share the information and as a group you move fast right so one of the topic i know like pretty good at sharing somebody knows pretty good at like devops so we can just share and then like we collaborate and both of us will get benefit right but one of the drawback of that approach or constraint you need to understand is the group can move only to the speed of the slowest standard and because not everyone can contribute like 4 hours every day for study right so there'll be like some candidates who cannot give enough time so the group is going to move with that speed right so if you are like study group kind of person yes uh, that is something uh, definitely helps i tried that uh, but that didn't help me to some extent but some extent it helped me where we used to do the like mock preparation within our group and uh each other like help each other like one said like okay i would solve this problem in this way and i would say oh i didn't thought about it so that kind of thing it helps you to give the different perspective right now next thing is like once you have the like judges or somebody is like trying to help you to judge the scenarios try to do the analysis of those mock results right simple thing what you can do is like get the study guide ask one of your judge who is going to be there like ask them to write you from 0 to 3 on every sub topic and every requirement that has been given right based on the study guide and then you can see is like okay 0 means is like you didn't do good or 3 means you exceeded expectations right and this is kind of like rubrics works uh, just for you to understand that will help you to see is like okay what is your trend if you solve first scenario you did wrong in like really zero or like one in system architecture then uh, identity then like second one you did good on those but then devops was like zero so you have to see about like pattern and you have to see about like how you can improve on those patterns right because architecture or cta is not kind of like a final destination i would say it's a journey that will help you to keep on improving in your professional life right the next thing is about like solve requirements with the right level of details right the example i would like to quote here is like suppose you have the requirement where when i close the opportunity i need to create the order in erp system right so obviously that tells me about like i there needs to be integration so how i'm going to do it what kind of event is that so if i try to do it on my first attempt i will say okay i will create the outbound message on opportunity okay that i'm telling what i'm going to do it but i'm doesn't tell like details about it so next attempt i'll try to improve that and i'll say is i'm going to create a outbound message on the opportunity on the closed one with the workflow criteria and outbound message will be sent to middleware which will create the order onto erp system right so that is my second level of improvement okay but still i will not get the good score because that is not right solution so now next improvement what i will do is like okay i will create the outbound message with the workflow uh, on the opportunity close one status that will send the outbound message to uh, mail sort or like middleware and then it will create a order the reason i propose this solution is because this will ensure that i am having the guaranteed success or guaranteed delivery and even if there is a middleware is not available or even my erp system is not available my outbound message is going to provide me guaranteed delivery with automatic retract right so now i address the same requirement with what how and why right that ensures that i will get the right scores and that also tells the judges that i just don't really know it but i know to the depth and i know the like breadth of the path 
right? Now, also in terms of like knowledge gap, there is one of the thing I would like to re definitely recommend is like on YouTube, there is something called like CTA two minute drill. And that is given by Joe Castro. He's also like one of the uh, CTA and uh, he's, he's been like uh, pretty good as well. Uh, I know him for uh, certain reasons. It's like, but go and watch this. The way he uh, pro uh, provided those videos is like, it's scenario, one paragraph scenario with some requirements and two minutes. And then you have to go and look through about uh, uh, provide your solution within the two minutes and then present that solution. And then you should talk about all the possible options to solve that report, right? So it's highly recommended. There are only six videos, but I would say that gives us like what kind of pattern or what kind of preparation we need to have it, right? So now we are done with the knowledge gap. Now it comes to the like solutioning, right? So I prepared my knowledge. So now I'm gonna start with my solutioning. So here I get like 20, 120 minutes based on the old pattern, right? So when I start preparation, first thing first is like, I need to prepare outline, right? I need to prepare outline and I need to talk with my big picture, right? If I'm reading the scenario, eight, 10 pages scenario, I'm solving like 120 minutes. I need to understand, if I don't understand what is that customer is trying to understand or trying to do it, right? I'm not gonna be able to make it successful to see it because I may be able to solve the requirement technological front, but I won't be able to solve the requirement to the like business level, right? So CTA is not only about technology, you should be able to solve the business problem, right? With the help of technology. So that is what all CTA is about. So you should be able to talk about the big picture, right? Then you talk about, and this is the like methodology I use it during my CT preparation. So I find like, hopefully this will be useful to others as well, right? The second thing is like identify what are the actors or what are the different type of users who are gonna interact with your systems and what kind of license is the need, right? Because there could be some internal users, external users, what kind of licenses you would recommend. And more important, do not forget why. Because if you are recommending some license versus others, you should have the strong justification, right? Irrespective of what kind of license cost and those stuff, keep those aside, you have to provide the best possible solution, right? Once you talked about actors and licenses, then you move on to the system landscape where you talked about actors and licenses. Then you talked about like interaction with the system, like Salesforce consider, right? They interact with Salesforce, how they interact. They interact with through the mobile, they interact through the browser or they interact with the, some other device, right? Kind of like TV monitor or kind of like your console panel or something like that, right? How they interact with your system, right? Then second thing is about, you talked about like your on-prima system or the cloud systems, what are the systems which are gonna get obsolete? What are the systems you are introducing new? For example, customer may not be having your middleware, but you need to make sure that you introduce the middleware with the right justification, okay? Because if you do not provide the justification, your middleware has no purpose in the system landscape. It, it should not give you any marks, right? So you need to, talk about those through then like uh, then you'll be talking about uh, different uh, uh, identity solutions or like how the users will get authenticated you talk about the security at the same time right then but that is where like your whole system landscape it should at one flip chart or the one slide or diagram whatever you use it it should tell you or you should be able to walk through about whole scenario within that one slide right it should have that level of details, right? Next thing is like, when you talk about this whole solution, make sure that you identify if you are expecting or if you are using any platform features, make sure that you call it out very clearly, right? If you're gonna use your app exchange applications, make sure that you call it out that your solution dependent on third party systems, which may or may be native to the platform or maybe hybrid or whatnot, right? Don't just recommend the application solution if you don't know about it, right? Because you'll be calling yourself into the trouble. Okay? So make sure that you recommend the application solution if it is appropriate and if it is fitting to the needs, right? Then you talked about like org strategy and the mobile strategy because a lot of enterprises, depending on the requirements, you may end up in like single org, multiple org, multiple isolated orgs, hub and spoke and whatnot, right? So you have to think about it, how all of those things are gonna to work together, right? Even if you introduce multiple orgs, 
how the all all communication is going to work right what is it that you are going to use it same thing for the like mobile strategy if your users are going to interact with your system through the mobile what kind of mobile you are providing what kind of experience they are expecting right that will define your mobile strategy so right? so those are the areas you need to think about it when you talk about overall system landscape right then you go a level deep and then you talk about your data model and but remember like before you talk about data mobile uh, model you talk about the legends that you are using right because everyone uses the data model semantics and the like uh, uh, charts or like diagrams little bit differently so everyone has a different level of expertise or the experience with the er diagram tools right some would be using different thing so it's better to define what is it how your master data relationship is going to look like is it going to look like pro fit with the single line or circle and what not right it tells you about like master detail or look up relationship or you are using different color coding make sure that you have those legends specify also how your object is going to look like what information is every box of the object that you define what business entity correlates to who is the owner what is the record type and so on and also the volume if you could include right right so that's that's where like it gives the complete information about your data model and relationships right plus it also touched upon security right which is the next point is like sharing and data visibility because all of us heard like sharing is caring when we are in kindergarten but when it comes to cta sharing is caring okay again sharing is caring it's it's literally because one wrong judgment or one wrong solution could break your solution or make your solution fall apart right so you need to be very careful about like how you do the sharing and uh, visibility right same thing applies about like security we talked about like how the user security happens how the like integration security happens right so if you look at all these topics are interlinked with each other and you cannot say like okay i'm just good at integration if you cannot talk integration in conjunction with the security right so as we are progressing on the data model sharing and then you talked about like large data volume how does the can you identify the large data volume or the objects that will qualify for ldv right how do you define ldv uh, what are the impacts are there going to be ldv from day 1 or there are going to be ldv over the period of time what is your what are the risk and what are the mitigation strategy for that you should be able to call those out very clearly and again why is very 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 important right then you talked about like integration we touched it right so when you talk about the integration make sure that you talk about source system target system protocol what is the security between the two systems and so on right and then out of the 8 to 10 pages document uh, scenario that you get it there are like 90 to 100 requirements business process requirement and this is your opportunity to demonstrate your platform skills right how good you are at like providing solution with the point and click or configuration versus programmatic skills again programmatic a solution is not bad but it should have the right justification right so every solution has its pros and cons so make sure that you justify why you are choosing x versus y right and then last come second last comes is like your project execution methodology and what is your devops and governance how you're going to what risk you identify how you're going to mitigate this risk what is the governance structure you are proposing to your customers or or, or like clients right also that talks about what is the environment strategy you are planning how you are thinking about like multiple orgs working multiple releases going in parallel and again this is all based on like what is been asked in the requirement last thing define and master your style that is very very important because a lot of people you talked about it like hey i prepared in different ways somebody else prepared in different way because i talked to like nine different people during my city journey and all of them used different ones right there are few people like who i learned from them is like how to make the powerpoint presentation in 7 minutes having all of your requirements and it's not something i, I could do it in 7 and a half minutes it was not bad i then i switched the i tried the different options i tried with the excel file i tried with the like a uh, uh, preview on macbook right and i even like tried with the 
uh, flip chart and pen and paper, right? What I found is like when I was doing try kind of like trial and uh, error kind of thing or like experiments, I found is like I could do like typing. I could solve the requirement of one. 10 page or 10 uh, sentence requirements in like three minutes on Excel, but it took me like six minutes or five to six minutes on the like pen and paper, but I still choose to pen and paper, right? So because there are certain reasons, because if I solve with the pen and paper in 120 minutes, during the presentation, I don't have to look back at the scenario. And that's just me, that may work for others, that may not work for others, right? But these are the different options that you have it, where you can try it out different ways and see like what's, what's, what's your style and then master that style, right? Now, next one comes is like presentation, right? So when you start presentation, as I said earlier, tell the story, talk about the big picture. If you can talk about it, that tells like, okay, you really understand what are the key business KPIs that senior wants to address and your solution is working towards those KPIs and not just like, okay, I know workflow rules, I know process builders and whatnot, right? That is not something you want to showcase. You want to showcase is like, I can understand the business requirement and I can solve it with the right level of technical details, too, right? Next, pace your presentation to utilize the time. A lot of times people say is like, hey, I got 40 minutes, utilize the 40 minutes completely. I would say is like, Try to finish your presentation five minutes early so that you can utilize those five minutes gets added to your question and answers, right? Certain thing happens is like, as we are going with the full speed during the presentation, certain things you missed to talk about, right? You might have solved it, you might have thought about it and thought about it like, okay, during presentation, I will talk about this particular point and you might miss it, it's okay. Those additional five minutes during Q&A will give you an opportunity or give judges an opportunity to ask you the questions where you can score more, right? So again, it depends on like, what is your strong area? If Q&A is not your strong area, then I would say utilize all the time in your presentation because some people may be, behave differently in Q&A time, right? Because Q&A time pressure would be different than presentation pressure. So you have to think about it, what works best for you and make sure that you give the enough time for that. Okay? Uh, but I would highly recommend not to overrun your time during the presentation, right? Also during presentation, it's okay to correct the solution. If you realize I'm talking about the data model and then I realize, oh, I forgot to draw the relationship. It's okay, go and correct it while you present it. Judges are not going to reduce your mark or something like that, or there is nothing wrong. It's It tells, in fact, gives the judges that, okay, when you are explaining it, you missed it out, you are ready to go back and correct it. So that's a very good sign. So no need to feel bad about it. I forgot it and no need to get panic about it. Okay. Picture speaks thousand words. Uh, I say that, but my presentation doesn't have any pictures. So <laughs> sorry about that. But my CT presentation was not like this for sure. Right. So it had a lot of diagrams. It had the diagrams where it was appropriate, uh, but that's the reason I'm recommending is like, make sure that you include the picture because you cannot explain the system landscape with the words. You cannot explain the data model with the words. You have to have right level of diagrams and you have to have the right level of details to it, right? Next one is define legends and abbreviations. As I said, in like data model, I had my data model during even my uh, system landscape, I had the legends. I specifically call it out as like, what system is gonna get absolute? I will color that with the red or map the asterisk or something like that, right? But I talk about that, otherwise judges won't know what does this asterisk mean? Is it special character or what is that, right? So you need to be, if you are using the legends or abbreviations, make sure that you make those clear to the judges so that everybody will be on the same platform, right? Then next thing is about justify your solution. As I said, as I gave like an example earlier about like opportunity from Salesforce to ERP, justify your solution. That is where like judges are looking for it. They really want to know is like, not just how you're gonna do it, but why you're doing it, right? And that is where the, because, how to do it, any developer can do that. You don't need an architect for that, right? But out of like three choices, choosing the best one, 
or I would let me change, repeat it. Out of three good choices, choosing the best one, architect can do that, right? Uh, so that's where like it's important to do it, right? Now execute. So this is your day to show your performance, right? Uh, mock and review, treat both of them equally same, right? When you're doing like, if you're scheduling like, suppose your mock uh, review sessions, a review board, 9 a.m., try to do at least few scenarios at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. like time window, right? So that it will tell your body and brain saying that, okay, like nine o'clock, I need to get like two hours for my scenario solution preparation. Then like 45 minutes, I need to go and do a presentation. And then 40 minutes, I need to go and do my uh, Q&A, right? So that you are making yourself get used to what kind of solution is going to be, right? So same, treat the like mock and review board like same so that like you have the four hours for the mock every time. Again, now, Pattern is changing, so please always look at the like trailhead, what is the new pattern, and so on, right? Second thing, be confident. There are two things that will make you confident. One, have you had a good sleep in the night? Have you had a good rest? Is your mind and body fresh, right? If your body is not supporting your stage of mind, it is going to be difficult for you to perform in the mock or into the CT, right? That is the most important thing. And second thing is about, have you done enough preparation? If the answer is no, then you will always, when you walk into the room, you'll always have a question. What if I get the scenario in this particular area? Oh my goodness, I don't know how to solve it. Or probably I didn't get enough time to think about it, how I'm going to solve it, right? So it is very important to like prepare, right? So whatever we talked about in the last 30 minutes, it is important that will help you to boost your confidence. If you're confident, it doesn't matter what kind of scenario comes in. You have practiced enough. You are knowledgeable enough to crack that scenario. Okay. Third thing, rehearse the review board. What do you mean by that? Think about it. When you're doing all this preparation, it is always important to close your eyes. Think through about it. Think about those four hours of your life, how you're going to spend it and what you're going to do it, right? Close your eyes. First thing first, you're going to go to the like review board. You're going to take all the flip charts. You're going to put those on the tables. You're going to route, write the numbers on those. First number, that is my agenda slide. Second number, that is my actors and licenses slide. Third number, that is my system landscape. And so on, right? You should rehearse it in so much knowing that number seven, I know that's my data visibility rules. That's where I'm going to write it, right? So that's what you have to practice with, right? Think about it. Just close your eyes, run through it, see it. You'll find it like money. But yes, you do that. Uh, that will really help you out. Okay? Then when it comes to the question and answers, listen to the questions very carefully. Because when you listen to the question, the question, don't just jump to answer to the question because question could be tricky and question could be simple, right? The question could be of like three different types. What? How and why? Because you presented your solution, but your solution, when you present it, you didn't say enough details, right? So they might say, or the you didn't say the like use the right terminology. So they will say, what is the solution? Okay. So can you tell me how what you're gonna do with this particular requirement? Then you need to think about it. Okay, probably I didn't explain it well. So you need to explain that. The solution could be like you explain the solution, but you didn't explain it in detail. So they might ask the question about like, how you're going to solve this requirement, right? So you need to provide the enough detail about it, right? And third thing is about like, why? Why you are doing that, right? So you did not justify your solution or solution you propose is not having the strong solution or not optimal solution. So that's where you may have to think about it and you may want to change the solution, right? So with that, uh, you have the like, at times you will find out like, okay, like there is a solution and based on the questions, you may take the hint and you may change the solution and that's absolutely okay. But make sure that do not just change the solution based on the question, change the solution if it is really required because you change solution in one place, that may have ripple impact on all other places. For example, if you change the database relationship, right? If you change relationship in one object, 
is it going to impact you on your visibility role is it going to impact you if that object may or may not be visible outside right to your external users and so on you have to think about it all of those things right how does it impact on my sharing set how does it impact on my sharing and so on if you change the license if you choose the wrong license hey that object may not be available to see it you have to think about it how you're going to solve it and so on right so that's the reason last two bullets what i'm saying is like do not change the solution because there are questions and don't hesitate to change the solution if it is appropriate right so you have to take take the right judgment based on the need at that time right so with that i will open up for any question and answers so thank you sachin thank you for that uh, wonderful uh, you know experience and sharing your pearls of wisdom uh, i think this is a very critical topic and uh, a lot of us all the audience including me we are all very very excited to be a part of this session now we've got a lot of questions around this and i'm going to um, i've kind of listed them down i'm going to be you know kind of shooting them them at you and then sure. you know you can just uh, give it your shot so one of the first questions uh, is air, um, i think we get this question often is you know is there a specific area around which uh, you know an individual needs to have experience uh, you know before he thinks that he wants to become a cta so does he does he need only admin experience does he need to have code experience so what are your views on that okay uh great question right uh, one thing is like i would say it's a cta exam right so and the syllabus is like whatever is generally available from self for still date that is a syllabus right now think about it as a admin right or just a certification would it help you to design uh, or architect a solution that can test your depth and breadth in identity test your depth and breadth in sharing or ldv and those stuff right if you think you can address all of those then i would say you are ready for cta but if you think you cannot then you are not ready for cta right so that's a self assessment right the second area i would say is like uh, when you prepare for all of these things lot of lot of people i met with and i talk with they go for designer certifications with the aim of getting pass and i would highly recommend do don't go for the certifications just to get the certification try to go for the certification to gain the knowledge right because certification you go and talk to the friends who passed it get the dumps and get that th- stuff and you will pass it but when it comes to the like field to implement it you will never be able to implement the best architecture right so that's the reason that tells you about why what you really need to do it to be a like cd does that help the question absolutely uh, sachin that definitely helps yeah. um so the next question i think we we have uh, about two or three questions purely around uh, the mock scenarios so i'm just going to uh, club them into one and in the sure. interest of time uh, ask you all that questions in a club single question so basically you talked about uh, preparing for mock scenarios right so yeah. um, our audience really wants to know saying that how do you schedule and prepare for mock scenarios where do you find the examples and the content for the mock scenarios and you know with with whom should you do really a mock scenario how do you find the right people to uh, you know engage in a mock scenario okay that, that again that's a great question and lot of people find the difficulties with that right one of the thing is like if you go to trail blazer community and there is a group called cta preparation or cta study group right i don't remember the exact group but i i will post it to the like uh, if there is any chat or something like that right but there is a group on trail blazer community go there uh, susan ferguson has posted some of the mock scenarios there right so go and use those as a mock scenarios right there are some scenarios which are been actually used in the past cta boards right so that will give you about like what is it that you can expect then second part of the question is about how do we choose the like judge and who do we like right a lot of time it's difficult because when i internally we have like our judging uh, we have like mentor uh, relationship and like there are mentor and coaches 
same thing before joining salesforce i was with like one of the sap partners and i started the cto study group there as well uh those who don't know where i was working like uh i was working with cts earlier uh but you can check on my linkedin profile but i started the cts study group there so there are like few people i know of like go and reach out to them if within your organization you can start the cta preparation sometimes you may not find anybody who has the cta experience or try to reach out there is i think public group called ladies be architect right go and try to join those study groups uh, i believe jitendra was already part of it but join go and try to join those groups and try to uh, do some of the like mock scenarios another best thing i would recommend is you implemented i'm pretty sure to be a cta like you must have like good cta implementation experience or like architecture experience right try to take one of your customer scenarios and try to formulate that in like 10 page 8 pages or 10 pages kind of requirement believe me that is going to be really difficult than solving that scenario actually okay because building the question paper is more difficult than building the uh, a solution okay so hope that answers uh, the question absolutely um, so the next question is um, i think you covered a part of it but uh, you know definitely we want to know, uh, know the answer to this question is uh, you know after you know most of us pass the application architect and the system architect uh, certification exam you know what does it take and what kind of preparation uh, do you believe it takes to kind of get to the cta um, review board right yeah look i am I'm, i'm telling the same thing to my like uh, mentees as well right the people who i mentor for cta uh, what i say is like right if you are in the journey of getting that application architect and system architect okay first thing first is like how much time you think you are going to need it to get that those two certification right if you are experience and if you are really architect it should not take more than 8 to 10 weeks to get both the certifications right both in the sense all those 8 9 certifications right and that will give you enough time for the or enough runway for your cta right because cta is like technical syllabus is all everything that has been covered in those two right application and system then what remains is like improving your soft skills improving your presentation skills and improving your like how do you handle the pressures how do you handle the timing and mastering your site right because when i i did all my application architect and system architect probably 2 years before i could do my like cta as well right so by the time i started my cta I, the lost all the touch or probably a lot of areas were like vanish because it's simple like out of sight is out of mind uh, so that's where like i had to start it again but then, then i give like probably 4 weeks or 5 weeks just to brush up everything again right and then get back to my city track all right awesome um uh, so the next question um is i'm sure you often get this question is is there a recommended preparation time or length of preparation time that uh, you know one needs to think through before he goes and attempts uh, a cta so you know specifically in terms of number of months or number of weeks how much should one prepare for yeah so th- there is no thumb rule right because i have seen the candidate who does not have self for experience okay and knowing what is self for or what is uh, how to create the object till the cta that time frame is 6 months okay it doesn't mean that they don't know the platform they know the platform very well that's the reason they got to like in 6 months but there are few people like who are been like with lot of time in like uh, salesforce ecosystem but still take time so i would say every individual is different how to judge yourself are you confident enough that you are ready for cta right are you seeing your mock scenarios trend is going upwards right those are the indications to tell you about like oh you are improving and you are ready for cta right uh, if other of the answer is no then probably you are not ready for the cta and you need to have the more real time experience awesome awesome um so there is this one interesting question um and it's it's more around how do you 
once you become a cta how do you maintain your level of knowledge after becoming a cta because mm-hmm. there is continuous improvement and enhancement that is happening to the platform so how do you keep up keep pace with that right see that's what i said earlier is like cta is not a final destination it's a journey right and once you become a cta that is where your responsibility starts to keep on building the good architectures right <laughs> so the only thing to do is like okay i'm working on something i'm uh, keep on like there are two ways i look at it one is about keep on coaching others right that is a good opportunity for you to like make sure that hey i did something during my cta that may be helpful or there could be better way to do it right you can do that by coaching somebody else right and second thing is about as you keep on doing these things right every architecture or every customer engagement comes to it right you make sure that you try to apply those right because cta is not a final stage it's a journey and you just keep on like improving day by day it's not at some part of time you will say okay like i'm focusing too much of community cloud my sales cloud is like going off right but your architecture skills once an architect is always an architect you may be missing the new features coming up but you will not be missing out how to define the good architecture okay perfect um and then there is there is a question around um how much would you uh, you know pro- give a weightage in terms of um you know usage of soft skill versus your hard skills uh, you know when it comes to being a cta how how what is essential out of these two and you know can you just throw some light on that i would say both are equally important right think about it think beyond your cta exam right you are pretty good at architecture right you know like platform in and out but when it comes to implement that right you cannot talk to your stakeholders you cannot convince your stakeholders that you have to go with open id versus you have to go with saml versus delegated authentication it's of no use right your cta certification is of no use because cta certification is one thing but implementing that knowledge and expertise onto the field is the second thing is that's the reason you have to have the right combination of both technical as well as uh, soft case thank you for that and then um, there is there are two last questions that i'm going to take and then we're going to be uh, you know calling it a day for the session so um, one is there a checklist for um, for one to know that he he or she is ready to kind of go and take the review board so is there something of that sort which is available or you know some process around that which which kind of helps one know that okay now i am ready and i can um i'm an eligible candidate for taking the review board uh there is no such checklist uh one thing i would always do and that's what i did as well when i was doing my mock scenario what i did is from every mock scenario i was getting the results right and sometimes i would do good sometimes i would do worst so what i did is like i consolidated all those results and see like how the my trend is going right am i doing consistently wrong with identity am i doing consistently good with devops or those kind of thing that help me to check about like okay when i go for my cta am i ready for cta because if i'm still making the basic mistakes on my data model basic mistakes on my licenses and like actors i'm not going to get to my cta right so that's where like that should be your uh, checklist one thing i i mentioned briefly in my presentation is take a print out of your study guide cta study guide right and evaluate yourself under with every mock scenario that you present it against that uh, study guide and see how you do in each of the topic and sub topics if you think like yes i did good at everything then you are kind of like ready for cta perfect and then um one last question is uh, um the audience really wants to know is how much of uh, so usually you know salesforce has a large product suite and there are different products uh, that cater to different requirements or different scenarios so how much of it uh, you know how, 
how important it is to know things like the e-commerce platform or uh, you know products like einstein which are not so commonly used uh, in in the in the regular implementations but uh, you know so how how important are uh, it is for one to know them before you know he or while he's preparing for a cta right so i would say is like again the syllabus is whatever selfus has released which is ga and not discontinued is the syllabus right that includes commerce cloud marketing cloud paradox sales cloud service cloud core capabilities right even the platform performance and what not right all of these things are important because when you go to the like scenario you don't know what industry this scenario comes from right if the scenario comes from the like say banking industry or the finance or insurance industry right you should be knowing this like is my bfs or like if i my financial services cloud is going to address those right all the requirements mentioned or can i use a part of like wealth management from my financial services cloud and can i use other capabilities from my platform right so that's the reason it is important to know both the sites and like whatever whether it's a cards products or even with the like app exchange right you need to know like all of it to the level where you can justify your solution and it is okay if like say in the scenario is like financial services industry financial services cloud may fit exact perfect right but you would prefer to build it on the sales cloud and service cloud platform that is absolutely okay right you may not know the financial services cloud but if you propose a financial services cloud you should be knowing that that okay it meets all the requirements and i don't have to compromise something or i don't have to just give some vague answers because judges might one of the judges might be pretty good with financial services cloud and they may grill you on that so it's up to you because always remember in sales was ecosystem you can do certain things in a different way right can you justify the solution that you choose is the best optimal if that is true then you could get through cta awesome um i think uh, we have a lot of questions but i think in the interest of time uh, you know we'll probably be able to address only so many questions uh sachin thank you so much for being so patient and answering all all the possible questions that you could and for you know for this wonderful and amazing session and thank yeah. you for thank you everyone for being such a great audience now it is it's my pleasure and let the questions come in through chatter or like group and i will try to answer to my best capabilities okay. thank you so stay safe everyone go ahead sachin yep i would say thank you everyone and wish you all the best for your cta journey and uh, stay safe and boards are like changing the pattern so be ready for the virtual boards and uh the pattern is going to change from 2 hours to 3 hours kind of thing so please look out for the details okay we show happy journey awesome. for it awesome awesome thank you so much sachin and thank you everyone have a good day stay safe and enjoy the rest of the virtual dreaming thank you thank you have a good one